So, having said that, our first historic speaker, Carolina Latanz, ran a woman-centered newspaper and was a radical voice during Italy's revolutionary triennium. Born in Tuscany in 1771, Latanzi was among many women whose voices helped gain consensus for a revolution. What made her radical was that her patriotism boldly included a call for women's rights. Further, she called upon women to take the initiative to secure their own rights. Rights, she believed, should be greater than those of men. Latanzi's lecture, the Slavery of Women, delivered at the Public Instruction Academy in Mantua in 1797, is considered one of the most well-known, well-known, and important emancipatory works of her day. Here to deliver Latanzi's speech, the Slavery of Women, is Rosie Mcmahon. Oh, she's so tricky. <laughs> She is a writer who runs a private practice in counseling and education and who participates in community-based activities that attempt to affect social change. For over 25 years, she has developed and implemented services to youth and adults of all backgrounds in a variety of settings. She has also presented at conferences and workshops on the local, national, and international level. 50 years old, she tends to her garden in Amherst, where she lives with her multi-generational family. Ladies and gentlemen, Rosie McMahon reading as Carolina Latanzi. I dedicate this speech to my maternal grandmother, Maria Muscolino. The Slavery of Women. Dear citizens, one cannot deny that in the kingdom of freedom, women should claim higher rights than men. In vain, nature granted my gender a sweet predominance over your hearts. Ambition, accompanied by low opinion of interest and jealousy, made us twofold slaves to despots, fathers, and husbands. The more cruel was the deplorable condition of women in the previous system, the more they had to bend their heads to the oppression of tyrannous parents. Who among you does not know some of these unlucky victims personally? Which one of you does not know how certain parents exercise their authority on young and inexperienced daughters? But if fathers and mothers are usually tyrants to their daughters, if so are husbands to wives, no less have been the despots of nations to my gender. They poisoned the source of life with their oppressive laws and turned the sweetest of the bonds to one of the heaviest chains. Is it not perhaps utter tyranny that forces a woman to live forever with a cruel husband who treats her like a slave? Is it not an infamous outrage against freedom and nature that one may get divorced only after long judiciary proceedings but cannot get married again to compensate for the bad treatments that she received in the previous marriage? Even the dowry establishment became a disadvantage for us since we were denied having equal rights as men for the distribution of our father's inheritance. We were told thousands of times that we were created for the happiness of men. We might need your help, but we do not lack the energy and the virtues to deserve it. If you think of excluding us from the revolution, it cannot be conquered by half of mankind only. If men do not want to be the slaves of one tyrant, we do not want to be the slaves of thousands. You hate a despot. We hate the aristocracy of men under whose yoke we have groaned for centuries. What? Do you say that women are unworthy of having the same rights as, and duties as you? Are we not capable of most noble and decisive actions? Roman liberty would not have triumphed with the Tarquini 
without Lucretius and Clelius. Women, to humiliate those who consider us unworthy and for our glory, let us remember that Rome was liberated by a woman, and that thanks to a woman, the people obtained the consulate, and thanks to a woman, decimbral tyranny was terminated. Some of you would like to tell me that our gender has too many imperfections. I cannot deny it, but men have always exploited our sensitive physique and have always educated us with the ignorance of civil and scientific and fanatic superstition. If we are frivolous and superstitious, blame yourselves for it. So, injustice of men and deception have sickened and oppressed us. If resistance against oppression is a right, men cannot deny us that same right. Each one of us knows how despotic their authority is to women in Asia and Africa. Nature trembles for them and takes revenge by making barren those unhappy victims sacrificed to the brutality of their mustached tyrants. Ah, then let the day of redemption come from my sex too, and so with more reason will you call us the dearest half of mankind. Arrivederci. <laughs>